Welcome to Rising. We have a great show for you today. Brianna Joy Gray joins us to discuss Congressman Clyburn inserting himself into the Ohio primary. And Washington Post economics reporter Jeff Stein joins us as well. But first, Tuesday, a group of House Republicans met privately with activists in Washington for a strategy session. Progressive activist Lauren Windsor of The Undercurrent was also in attendance, and she shot footage of the event, which she has shared exclusively with Rising. Right now, if the biggest issues on, on the hearts and minds of people is inflation, the border, and, and, and probably, I'm going to tell you the life issue, because I think that with the Supreme Court teeing up the Mississippi case, this is going to, is going to come up. We've seen polling. Yeah, we, I mean, we're going to run on, on what, they used to, what we used to call social issues. We have a whole subset of policies that are ready to go on day one, and, and, and they're already assigned to authors. We already have legislative text for a lot of this stuff, and we're going to just come out of the blocks. And if we have a sizable majority, which I think we're going to have, you're going to see a lot of very exciting things. Okay? And, I, and if I tell you right now, since we're on video and everybody's watching in California, what, um, what, the, what, what the top three priorities are, then I'll get in trouble because I am in elected leadership and I'm not supposed to jump out in front. That's just the way we do it. But I'm telling you, in the next couple of weeks, in probably the next probably three months, You'll see that crystallize, and it won't be Mike Johnson's version of it. It'll be his version of it. It'll be the whole conference. So. Well, I don't want to monopolize you, but, you know, I'm just, life is very important to me, and President Trump gave us, he delivered us a SCOTUS that I believe is going to give us a ban on abortion sometime in my lifetime, and I'm just, you know, uh, what can Congress do to, so, so I, I've been working but, that arena, until that happens? Yeah, I've been in that arena since I got, the day I got out of law school, literally for 20, almost 25 years. <laughs> Um, I was a pro-life litigator. I did religious liberty defense, pro-life defense in the courts, right? So um, it's been near and dear to my heart. I've known Amy Coney Barrett since high school. We go way, way back. And um, I was one of the guys pushing Trump really, really hard to put her on the court. And, and I, I think that Amy would offer the opinion. I, I do. I think she'd be willing to do it. And I think we're going to have at least five of those, if not all six, of the conservatives that will help us. If we overturn Roe, which I think is, I, I think it's imminent. I really do. Because I think if you look at it from the originalist perspective, which all of them are now espousing, most of them are espousing, you know. It's indefensible. It's indefensible, and it goes back to the states. Emily, can you tell us a little bit about the Mississippi case that he references? He says the Mississippi case is working its way to the Supreme Court. Like, what, you know, what, 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 is, what does that case turn on? And is that, is that the one where con that conservatives are hoping will be the vehicle to overturn Roe? I think it's one of the ones. Um, that I think there are a number that people are actually watching, and that's one of them. And so, yeah, it's, it's interesting that he particularly singled that one out. That is, a, that is probably the top one that people are watching. And if it does make its way to the court, that's why I'm saying his use of the word imminent is what really stands out. This is somebody who's saying he's known Amy Coney Barrett since high school. And again, it's funny because it's sort of like a Rorschach test where Ryan is probably sitting here like this is this is really uh, significantly negative and I'm sitting here like this is awesome <laughs> he knows her uh, no it's it is one of those things where the imminent the use of the word imminent is is of some news value here real news value because if he you know has known Amy Coney Barrett for a really long time has been involved in these conversations about who to put on the court was involved in the conversations when it came to Donald Trump's decision to nominate her and he's saying he thinks that an overturning of Roe could be imminent. To some extent, it's something he would probably say openly in public, um, but it, it is very interesting, and I think it is probably a reminder and a, a stark reminder that a post-Roe world could, in fact, be imminent. Right. right, and Justice Barrett did grow up in Louisiana, right. uh, and both of them are clearly part of the, this movement, so it's, it stands to reason that, that he actually did know her. Lauren, welcome to the show. Thanks, Ryan. Can you tell us a little bit about where, where this event was and what kind of event it was? Yeah, so it was a Capitol Hill Lobby Day with Patriot Voices, which is uh, Rick Santorum's organization, former uh, Senator Rick Santorum. And so he says he has known Justice Amy Coney Barrett since high school, and he says, I, I think that Amy uh, will author the opinion overturning Roe v. Wade, and he, he says that he thinks it's, it's imminent. Um, what, what jumped out to you about, about that clip? I mean, what jumped out to me, uh, I, I think obviously with conservatives, um, they're always talking about being pro-life, how pro-life they are and wanting to overturn Roe, but, um, uh, particularly with Amy Coney Barrett, there was a certain amount of caginess. Yeah, you know, there's always the implicit 
support for overturning Roe and having an abortion ban, but they don't come out and say it because they don't want to rile up the uh, pro-choice base. Yeah, I think that's a, a fair point. There was a lot of conversation around the, the course of the Amy Coney Barrett nomination um, that was focused on, you know, we don't know how she would rule on Roe. Um, and that was definitely a way that that was something that was emphasized on the right. There are a lot of critics from the left of the Roe decision itself. And I think that gets to what Johnson is saying, that it may be imminent. It's probably time for both sides to start reckoning with what a post-Roe world would look like, because it isn't the most solid decision when it comes to the, the time to actually make a de another decision decision on it. So I want to ask, Lauren, what pretense, if any, did you need to get into that meeting and record? Um, how, basically, how did, you, how did you get into that meeting? Was there permission to record? Was it on the record? There's that moment where he looks at the iPhone and says he's, got, he's on video. What was the pretense? I mean, I just signed up for the event, uh, but <laughs> I, 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 I registered for the event. It was off the record, um, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, no, I hear that. Did you register under your own name? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Uh, Lauren, was there, anything, uh, was there anything else throughout the day that, that puts this in a broader context? I mean, you know, people should understand that the organization is uh, Rick Santorum's nonprofit, and you know, Rick Santorum, his signature issue has been, uh, you know, fighting uh, abortion access and reproductive rights. Mm. Right, for sure. Um, did, did, he, did he say anything more about, because I, I also thought it was interesting, uh, and you'll post, I think, you know, more, I'm sure you'll post more of these, these clips, uh, you know, throughout the day or tomorrow. I, th I thought it was interesting how he said that they're working on a lot of legislation that they have ready to go on, on day one that they'll have ready to go on day one if, if they win the, the House of Representatives. And he mentioned life as something that is a, is a top priority of House Republicans. Did you get the sense that that's what he was talking about, that, that they do have legislation you know, re ready to go, regardless of what the Supreme Court does? Uh, it, the exchange that you saw in the clip was the totality of my conversation with him. We didn't have any other conversations on the side. Um, you know, he was unwilling. I, I, I pressed him on uh, giving those legislative priorities, and he was not eager to uh, divulge any of that, noting that, you know, he's a leader uh, in the party and can't come out uh, in front of Kevin McCarthy. And Emily, do, do you have a sense from your sources in, uh, on, in the House Rep Republican conference of, of whether or not they are preparing legislation on this on this issue if they take over the House? Well, what's interesting is he was speaking about it, the, the, the front part of that clip is really important, even broader, more broadly than the life issue, because he's talking about how there was a, a, a memo from Jim Banks, actually, that had been reported that was reported on last week that said the strategy of the Republican Party going forward is basically culture, that they're about to wage a culture war um, and a, a hard culture war. I mean, they're never, they'll, they're going to like, not, not wage, but engage in the culture war more heavily. Um, and so I think this is very much part right. of that. And that's interesting to a lot of people because there's this new coalition that's not necessarily, like the Trump coalition is not the same as the Rick Santorum Patriot Voices coalition. They're very pro-Trump, I imagine, but it's not the same group of people that sort of support Donald Trump. It's not like staunch religious right um, conservatives. You have a lot of like union Democrats from West Virginia, Ohio, and Kentucky that are now involved in the Trump coalition. And so the, the inclusion of life in the culture war, I think, is an important point um, in the context of that Banks memo saying Republicans are going to start running really hard on these issues because it's working. Um, that's that was particularly important, it, it, particularly noteworthy to me. And I would say also that they probably they probably are working on those things. Right. Yes. Yeah. And, and Democrats have Democratic strategists have been confident for years they, and they, they would say, you know, Republicans aren't actually serious about this. Yes, right. They're 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 just whipping up their base and promising that that they will do that they will ban abortion, but they're never actually going to do it. Well, that may have been incorrect. Yeah, no, I think that that absolutely would be incorrect, and I think Republicans feel in part of Lawrence's clip. You can see they really feel confident with the wind at their back on this issue right now, and that's a, another takeaway from the clip. Lauren, thank you for uh, appearing here today. Thanks, Ryan. We'll have more rising for you right after this.